what do you think is like a non-obvious factor in whether a rookie makes it or not? Can you think of anything that's like the intangibles? It's really work ethic. Like you gotta, you gotta be able to get in the gym. Like, and a lot of it is mental, especially rookie year. Like everybody can play, like, especially in the WBA, it's only 144 spots, 12 teams. Like, so everybody was a star at their college. Like everybody's good. You know, everybody was maybe all American, at least all conference in their college period. So that's really not even the issue. It's like, learning the game like a lot of that stuff is mental i mean you know too like the the best players know the ins and outs of the game the players pod is proud to be sponsored by longtime partner wis as your go-to accounting and growth partner, WIS understands the power of teamwork, and they're ready to take your business to the next level. To learn more about how WIS can help you succeed, head over to WIS.com. That's W-I-S-S dot com to accelerate your company's journey today. Welcome to the Players Pod, where we talk to the biggest names in women's sports about the untold stories behind their success. I'm Kelly O'Hara, and my guest today is Arike Agumbawale. Arike Gumbawale might be best described as a basketball legend in the making. At Notre Dame, she famously scored back-to-back game winners to lead her team to the national championship in 2018. And in just three years in the WNBA, she's already been named an All-Star Game MVP, won the WNBA scoring title, and been selected to the All-WNBA first team. Arike is here today to talk all things basketball and take us behind the scenes of the WNBA. Arike, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks for having me. How you doing? Where Where are we finding you today? Uh, I'm in Dallas, Texas, getting ready for nice. training camp next week. Yeah, you guys start up soon, huh? Yeah, yeah. Um, on the 17th, so I'm excited about that. Nice. Well, today we're recording, and it's the night before the WNBA draft, so... I'm curious to hear if you guys, if you want to guess who's going to go one, two, three tomorrow. And then when this airs, we can see how right you were. I say... And just so the listeners know, so it's the order is Atlanta Dream, Indiana Fever, Washington Mystics. Mm. So who, who's say, going? One, two, three. I say Ryan Howard goes number one, Melissa two, and Shakira Austin, I think three. Okay. All right. How much attention do WNBA players pay to the college draft and like to the college game? Um, it depends. Like, so I was overseas for a little bit. Then I was in Russia and, you know, the war happened. So I came here. Yep. So overseas, it's a lot harder. Like, obviously the games at seven o'clock are like 3 a.m. So I'm not staying up to watch nobody play. Yeah. But when I'm in America, like I always catch the, catch the game. So since I've been here, I've watched a lot and I've been pretty impressed too. So but yeah. I, I feel like the people in the States, they tune in, especially if it's on TV. So for yeah. sure. I want to talk about WNBA, but I first want to talk about your college career. Um, you played at Notre Dame. You have an insane like story of your national championship mm. game or, you know, run to the national championship in 2018. Uh, you scored back to back buzzer beaters, which I watched them this morning in preparation for this and like, <laughs> which is like, oh my God, like got goosebumps, <laughs> got goosebumps watching the semifinal and then mm. watching the final, the YouTube clip that I watched, like everyone who's listening should go watch this if you haven't seen it, but it showed all the different like perspectives of camera angles. So there was like you on the court, there was one zoomed out, there was one like the announcers, there was one on your coach and it was just so insane to watch. But talk to me a little bit about that run and and just like what that was like yeah it was crazy i mean the whole year was crazy we had like four acl tears so we really were going like six seven deep the whole season which honestly like looking back it's a blessing because you can make a mistake and coach can't pull you out so we out there doing whatever i'm shooting whatever i know she looked out of it she's probably pissed and she can't put nobody else in. that is great that that you're admitting that (laughs) yeah oh no yeah i always say that to her so i love junior year like it was so like like i said we went six seven deep so four acl tears but it was it was a crazy run like it, it was really crazy but yeah we we did it but 
I yeah, anytime I see those shots, like especially around March Madness, I obviously get tagged in it a lot. Like you see it a lot, and I just sit and watch it like wow, like it was crazy. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So what made you choose Notre Dame? Uh well both of my parents are educators, so they, they were big on me choosing a school that had good academics and then Notre Dame really had both and it was close to home, like it's only three and a half hours. I'm from Wisconsin, so you know, my parents were able to come to every game, drive up for every game and it really just, you know, had the best of both worlds. Good academic, you know, I uh majored in business, so I graduated from there. Uh and basketball was top five, so it was really a perfect fit for me. And then the coaching staff, you know, I fell in love with them. They you know, they already always show love in college, they, uh, I mean, high school, they came to a lot of games, you know, mm. I just felt like it would be a family and, you know, my parents felt comfortable sending me there and they knew they would take care of me. So it turned out really good. So can you talk a little bit about like how your progression went through college? Because you came in, you were more of a reserve your freshman year and then sophomore year found yourself on the floor. And then obviously junior year, you have literally what dreams are made of when it comes to mm college moments and the end of your junior year like that's just I I went to Stanford never won a championship Mm -hmm. like lost in the final so can you talk about your progression as a college Mm -hmm. athlete and like what what helped you and um how that went yeah it was rough I mean obviously people see you know win a national championship and just everything that happened junior year senior year but like freshman year like especially coming in like I was a top five player at McDonald's All-American like you, mm. you obviously have all these expectations and you get there I'm coming off the bench like some games not playing I'm like what, what, what is this like how, what how did you handle on? that though like I'm curious like what yeah. was your mindset yeah it was tough like for sure like it definitely is all about trusting the process like especially now you know I love that you know kids are able to you know transfer do whatever they want but a lot of times you just got to stick through I wanted to leave my freshman year and if I would have left you know you never know what, what would happen like I ended up winning the national championship junior year that might not happen anywhere else so like yeah it's all about just trusting the process trusting yourself and you know you really just got to put the work in like I thought I was working I get there I'm not playing I'm like okay I have to work harder so after my freshman year I was a little chubby freshman too I, I went home you know <laughs> I had to have my mom cook a whole bunch of food I was in the gym like twice a day like I just had to grind because I'm like I know you know what I want to be I know what I can be and obviously you know coach McGraw she's a hall of fame coach so she's not not playing me for no reason so you know it has to be me so I definitely just had to get back in the gym and work but yeah it was definitely tough I had you know a couple conversations and Niel she's the head coach now but she was uh the assistant coach at the time I'm telling her I'm like I, I want to go like I want to leave and my really? parents though you thought yeah. about leaving I thought about leaving. My parents were never going to let me leave. So I, I thought I was doing something, saying I wasn't leaving, but I wasn't going anywhere at the end of the day. But <laughs> yeah, but I was just like, this is crazy. But like I said, it's all about trusting the process. Like you just got to work. So that's what I did after that summer. Then obviously I came back and things got better. You know, I got better. So it was definitely tough my freshman year. It was, it was a roller coaster for sure. Yeah, there's there's certainly a jump from high school athletics to college athletics. Oh, and- yeah, for sure. And it's, it's interesting how people handle it. And, Mm -hmm. you know, especially coming out of college or high school, being top, top recruit, you know, that sort of thing. And then having to, to go through the grind and, and get in the gym and that, and that thing. So, um, going into the junior season, junior season, did you guys, were you, were you like, oh, like, did you think that you could win it all? Yeah, for sure. I mean, we we had a really, really solid team. I mean, our whole, well, I mean, junior year, but still. But we had a really good team. Like, And then we got uh, Jessica Shepard cleared, and she was a transfer from uh, Nebraska, so she was able to play that year. So our, our starting five was pretty solid. But I also didn't know, too, like I said, we had four ACL tears, so we were going six, seven deep. Like, it was it was definitely a roller coaster there, too, but we still had a good record. We, was, we were always uh, top five, but... I mean, I always think, you know, I can win something. So I definitely, you know, came into that season like, yeah, we're going to win this. And, you know, it turns out that happened. I love that. So your buzzer beater in the semifinals, incredible. But finals, the way that you fight to get the ball, get down to the baseline, you're shooting it basically off one leg. (laughs) I heard I heard you give a little bit of a blurb afterwards saying like you weren't even intended for the ball. They were trying to get it to another teammate. Mm. And you were like, no, I just like I got to get the ball because she's being double teamed. Like, can you talk about did, were you even thinking like what was that like? Because those are those are just like, again, dream moments. Mm. 
Yeah, I mean, I me being me, like, I'm always going to come to the ball, you know, at the end of the game. But we were, like, our first uh, look was Jess because mm-hmm. they, uh, Big T, she just fouled out. So they had, like, a freshman or sophomore, like, post on her. So we wanted to get her the ball, but Got the it. person read it and went. So, yeah, so I had to go to the ball. And, I mean, it, it turned out good. But, yeah, it was, those three seconds felt like a lifetime, literally. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, like, it's, it's was awesome to watch complete high of a career junior year senior year ends in you're in the final against Baylor Mm. at the free throw line you take two miss one you guys lose by one point can you talk about that moment yeah that was it's like I mean I feel like no college you know, players have to go through that. Like, you're at the top high the year before, then literally the bottom, like, in the championship, you know, lost. And I really didn't even get time to mourn, which I guess is good because the draft was literally, like, two days later. Like, everything just happened so fast. But, uh, you know, it's a blessing I was able to experience that. Like, and that just shows, you know, you can never get too high, too low. Like, things happen every day at the end of the day is basketball. Obviously, it hurt a lot, but, you know, I I knew, you know, the future I was going to have. So... But it was definitely tough. Like, I still think about it a little bit. Like, I could, really could maybe have two championships, but, you know, everything happens for a reason. But that was definitely a tough one to go through. For sure. Um, if it makes you feel any better, I got two yellows in my um, final of my senior year and got so in soccer. In it's a red card. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I know, spent yeah, the I last, used to play. I, I spent the last 15 minutes of my senior season in or my college career in the locker room watching my team lose. So yeah, I don't know which one of us had it worse. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but I, I like was like, man, I feel for her like that is tough. Um, yeah. Which which moment do you look back on more? Like which moment actually comes to like comes up in your mind more like winning a national championship or the mi- missing the, the final shot? Yeah. Winning for sure. Like Really? You, Good for yeah. you. Yeah. I mean, because at the end of the day, what 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 can I do about it? Like, and and a lot of people probably don't even remember the senior year missing, or they do, whatever. But like, <laughs> yeah, I I just remember the you know the wins. You just try to focus on the wins in the past. I don't really try not to think about that. Like when I miss a free throw in a game now or something, like I always think about the national championship. Like oh. that always comes to my mind when I'm on the free throw line. But other than that, that's about the only time I think about it. How's your free throw percentage been in the league? It's been pretty good. It's been pretty solid. I don't even know what it is, but it's been pretty solid. All right. I was curious if that, like, drove you to be like, never again will I miss. Yeah. (laughs) I wish, but no, I still Yeah, I know. (laughs) Yeah, that's not how it works, unfortunately. (laughs) Um, So you you touched on a little bit of the coaching staff at Notre Dame. Um, It's Niel Ivy, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So she was your assistant coach while you were at Notre Dame. She's now the head coach. It's her second Mm -hmm. year. Um, They made it to the Sweet 16. How do you think she's done at Notre Dame um so far she's done really well I mean especially you know all the adversity and you know players come in and out like you just have a new team uh building you know a new team and we had five all five of our starters uh got drafted my senior year so they really had to start over like we played a lot so they really had to start over with that but you know she's amazing she's always been amazing and dedicated to her team dedicated to us even you know players who played there now like we always keep in touch she always keeps in touch with alumni and stuff so you know she's a great coach she's a great person I would play for her obviously I love coach McGraw too but like they're they're both just amazing coaches like I would love to play for both of them but uh yeah you know I'm excited for her future and you know the players love her uh it's gonna be it's gonna be good for Notre Dame that was definitely a great hire nice I love that um and I love that you guys keep in touch do you do you get back to like games often at all no, I haven't been because I'm usually overseas during the season, yeah. but I think I'm going to take a break next year. Maybe we'll see. So I'll try to get down to some games. Nice. So you touched on it a little bit how, you know, senior year, miss final shot, lose national championship, but such a fast turnaround and not a lot of time to dwell on that moment because the draft was not even a couple days later. Mm-hmm. Um, can you... Talk, like talk a little bit more about that because I remember my senior year and it wasn't that quickly of a turnaround by any means it was like a month but mm. just it, I, to me it was it still felt very fast to go from playing college soccer and then all of a sudden like oh my god I need an agent like I'm about to get drafted I'm about to become right. a professional like what does this all mean um can you talk about were you like prepared for that do you think that was 
helpful in helping you like move on quickly? Like, would you have wanted more time? I just think it's so crazy that it's so fast. I definitely, you know, would have wanted more time because that's a lot. Like, you get drafted and training camp was, like, less than a week after that, too. So, like, in about two, three weeks, I go from college to literally a pro, like, practicing with these girls. Like, it was it was definitely crazy. But, uh, I mean, I guess that's just what happens. But definitely would want more time, you know, to just get settled, you know, get in the gym, train, just get ready for stuff. Obviously, it's a long season, so I would have wanted, you know, more rest from college going to WNBA. But, uh it was okay, but definitely, I think they got a little bit more time now because the draft is tomorrow. They finished like a week ago, but still a yeah. week is not a, week. not a lot. Yeah, right. Like that's more time, but it's still a week. That's, that's you know, very little. So hopefully that can change at some point, but you never know. Yeah. It's, it's, it's like, is which one's better having March Madness end and then having the draft quickly afterwards? Everyone's excited. They just watch this amazing tournament go down, all these players right. play, and then are, you know, invested in seeing where these players end up. Like, to me, I could see the the reasoning behind or the pros right, behind right. doing it that way. But I feel like for the athlete, it's mm. um, pretty quick and probably an absolute whirlwind. Um, yeah. <laughs> do you remember your draft night? Like... Yeah, a little bit. I mean, I was with my, who was there? My parents and one of my brothers. Uh, and we were just at the table waiting to get called. I really didn't know what number I was going to get called. So it was really okay. a surprise. Yeah. But so uh, had you, you hadn't had any, did you, so you didn't know you were going to go to Dallas? No, like I talked to them, like, cause you know, so obviously coaches talk to you like, yep. you know, throughout the time before you let up. But the first time I talked to Dallas was literally like, the night before the draft like and I talked to uh I think I talked to the coach Brian at the time and like I mean I don't really even remember what they were talking about it was all like every coach was about saying the same thing so I really don't even remember what they were talking about but I mean he was interested but like I didn't I didn't I really thought I was going to Minnesota at six to be honest Mm. but uh yeah so then I ended up getting called to Dallas did you feel at all like disrespected by going fifth I mean, me being me, like in my head, I'm like, you I'm like, it is what it is. I know I can, I know what I'm gonna do in the league, so that's their loss. But you know, <laughs> I didn't really feel like, like, oh yeah, I gotta prove to them because at the end of the day, like, I'm always about everything happens for a reason. So I wasn't, you know, meant to go to those places. But uh, and I and I love Dallas now. But I mean, in your head, I'm just like, okay, like that's interesting. But uh, <laughs> we'll see, we'll see what turns out in people's, you know, careers. <laughs> For sure. Well, you and I bring that up because you have done very, very well. And not to say mm. that the people were, who were taken ahead of you mm. um, haven't done well, but uh, you guys have both are the only like uh, Nafisa and you are the only two because she was taken sixth mm. are the two who have made the WNBA All Star game. So it's kind of like, mm. do you think there was a, do, yeah. you, do you think the do you think that was like a little chip on your shoulder going into the league like I'm gonna prove to you. Or are you not that type of player, like the, you know, moments of maybe like that or the miss in your senior game don't motivate you? You're just like forward focused. Yeah, nah. I mean, I feel like, you know, I wouldn't even say underrated because I, I, I don't think that. But like even in college, like, you know, people like the media highlights who they want to highlight as well. So like that's like it's always been the thing. So like yeah. at this point, like it's just like it is what it is. That's just what happens in women's sports in general, like a lot of it is political. So, you know, you just got to grind it out. Yeah, for sure. Well, you go into your rookie year. um, And what did you set any expectations for yourself? Like, how were you feeling going into that? Did you was there any part of you that was like, oh, this is kind of a high school to college moment where started, you know, I was at the top and now I got to start again at the bottom and work my way in? Like, what was your mindset entering the league rookie season? Yeah, I mean, I wanted to dominate, you know, like, <laughs> a t- yeah, I wanted to dominate, but I didn't, like, even the first couple months, like, I was still getting used to it. Like, I got, I think I got rookie of the month maybe twice out of, like, the three months or four months, too, but I still, like, it was like, uh, okay, until the last month, like, I just started going crazy, like, something just yeah. clicked, like, after All-Star break, something just clicked, and I was just... I was just going crazy. So it took me a little while to get comfortable. Plus I was playing point guard and I'm usually like a two guard. So I was playing point guard my whole rookie year. Like, so, and that year just made me, you know, gain so much respect for point guards. Like you're getting pressed. You have to call plays. People not in the right spots. So I'm like, what the 
else going on? Y'all see me struggling up here? Like, it's a lot. It's a Can lot of work. So after that, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. No, yeah. So after that, I respect point guard so much. So it was definitely a, a learning experience, but I'm glad I had that year for sure. Yeah. Well, you dropped close to 20 points per game your rookie year. So you didn't seem yeah. like you had a problem. Um, but again, WNBA <laughs> is like one of, is such a difficult league to crack, mm-hmm. especially for rookies. For sure. Um, players early in their careers. What do you think is like a non-obvious factor in whether a rookie makes it or not? Can you think of anything that's like the intangibles? It's really work ethic. Like you gotta, you gotta be able to get in the gym. Like, and a lot of it is mental, especially rookie year. Like everybody can play, like, especially in the WBA, it's only 144 spots, 12 teams. Yeah. Like, so everybody was a star at their college. Like, yeah. everybody's good. You know, everybody was maybe All-American, at least All-Conference in their college period. So that's really not even the issue. It's like learning the game. Like, a lot of that stuff is mental. I mean, you know, too, like, the, the best players know the ins and outs of the game. Like, basketball IQ. At the, and at the end of the day, everybody in WMA runs the same plays, essentially. So, like, you just got to learn stuff. You got to learn players. So, I think I, like, I had to, like, watch a lot of film and just try to, you know, see different things that I didn't know. Like, because, I mean, the women in WMA are a lot smarter than college. Like, there's a lot of stuff I didn't know that I, I mean, not I should have known because I was young, like, that I didn't know that I had to learn. So, definitely, like, the mental part, watching more film and basketball IQ and taking care of your body. Like, mm. I barely stretched in college. Like, I would just get, like, I remember my first practices and stuff. Like, I'm like, what? what's taking them so long to warm up? Like, I'm already ready to, I'm already ready to go. Like, and then after the last year, I'm like, shit, my body. Like, I need to, I need to get massages. I need to do all of this. So, definitely are just picking you, are up. You, you're picking you're up like 25. That. Like, you're oh, not yeah, But even, I don't yeah. feel it. My body just be dead. Like, I don't even know how we used to do AAU games, like six games a day and all that. Right. Like, oh my yeah, gosh. so a lot of stuff it, outside of basketball. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I'm I'm 33, so I, I definitely feel like I think, yeah. and I play on a team where they're like, the average age is probably 24 and you know, I'm like, guys, like, get on a stretching routine, like, get right. on your mobility, <laughs> right. like, get your right. prehab right. Trust me, you want it. It's going <laughs> to no, help literally. you in the long run. Yeah, crazy. Every successful athlete and entrepreneur knows that setbacks, mistakes, and losses are all a part of becoming a champion. Like a great coach or teammate, WIS helps business leaders find the vision and strength they need to succeed. Whether it's international taxes or advice around staffing, mergers, and finance, WIS is ready to assist your company in its championship journey. As proud supporters of female entrepreneurs, WIS not only sponsors the Players Pod, but they also sponsor the Just Women Sports brand new Ballers Market, a first-of-its-kind online marketplace for female athlete entrepreneurs. You can check it out at justwomensports.com slash ballers hyphen marketplace. To further this mission, WIS is giving away an unreal prize package of Ballers Market gear and JWS swag. To enter the giveaway, tweet at both Just Women Sports at Just W Sports and WIS at WIS LLP with the name of a coach who has helped you succeed either on or off the field. And then head to WIS.com, that's W-I-S-S dot com, to learn how WIS can help you turn a setback into a winning opportunity. I want to talk a little bit about Russia playing over there. Um, You were there this past winter. And you were there when Russia invaded Ukraine. So talk about how that went down. Like, what was that like? What happened for you guys? Yeah. And for you specifically? Yeah. Well, I'm a really chill person. And obviously, like, the U.S. is getting more. Like, I'm not watching the news in Russia and sitting Russian. So, like, True. I'm talking about family. Probably not going to help anyway. Like, <laughs> yeah, you're facts. There's no point to stress yeah. myself out. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, like, everybody's texting me, like, you need to get out, you need to do this. I'm like, I mean, I'm all right. And Russia was okay, like, because obviously they uh, invaded Ukraine. So, like, it's not like it was action, like, in Russia. So, like, we're going to the stores, like, I'm going to restaurants, like, but it's like, you just seeing on your phone, like, all of this is going on. Like, and where I am in Kursk, it was, like, it was pretty close to the border. So, like, I'm, like, me and my teammates are texting, like, I'm literally hearing, like, air something stuff is going on in the air every night I'm, just, I'm like do y'all hear that or am i just being paranoid no they're like no we hear like air activity so i don't know what was going on up there but like every night you would hear stuff and i'm just like oh wow yeah this is getting crazy but 
it wasn't like as as bad as Ukraine, obviously, but like they were yeah. starting to cancel flights back to the USA, like canceling American cars and stuff. So we had to get out of there. So how did how quickly were did you realize? Okay, this is serious. I need to get home because it's very uncertain what's going to happen in these coming days, hours, days, weeks. Like how how you know you you said it was kind of business as usual in Russia, mm. but again, Russia was the one who was invading Ukraine. Mm. Um, so how quickly did you make that decision? Like, I got to get home. Oh, it took a little bit. Like, I don't even know when the war started, but I didn't leave till March 1st. Oh, but okay. like, whenever I did get the flight, like it was like the day before and then I was out like the next day. Yeah, for sure. Was the season over or? Did, nah, they're did still playing now, actually. Oh, they are. So you, yeah. got, you were like, I'm out, like contract. Yeah. Like, did you break your contract or what was it? Yeah. Like, so all the Americans pretty much end up leaving from like every team in Russia. But like the Russian league is there in playoffs right now. So all the Russians are still there playing as if, you know, nothing's going on. But all the Americans are out. So it's definitely crazy. Dang. Yeah. That's wild. So crazy. Did you go, was your, after your first season, did you go, um over to Russia like have you been going each off season my first year I was in Turkey and then my the last two years I was in Russia which do you prefer Turkey or Russia um well Russia has a lot more money so Russia <laughs> but Turkey like Turkey's beautiful like I love Turkey the food like the the culture is amazing the food is amazing, like literally amazing. I don't know what they do out there, but it's so fresh and good. But mm. and, and I like Russia's culture too. Like my teammates, I love my teammates and like, you know, the the organization and all that stuff. But I, I'm definitely a big Turkey fan. Do you think that you'll go back and play abroad next season? Like, do you think that you'll make this a consistent thing? Uh, I mean, I, I might take a break next year. I don't know. It just depends on, you know, I don't know. I guess it just depends on when I get there. Like yeah. when, when we get to that time. So we'll see, you know what they're talking about. I'm not opposed to going overseas either, but we'll see. Is it the type of thing where you guys line up a, co- like how, how far out are you planning? Okay. I'm, I'm going to sign a contract. I'm going to go overseas. Like, is it a couple months in advance? Pretty early. Like, okay. It depends. Like, cause I mean, you could sign later too, but like last year when I was in Russia, like I signed even before the season to that same team. Like, so I do like, around this time already that I was going back to the team. Like, Got but it. this year, like I, I didn't sign back. So now it's open. Like I could sign with another team or stay in America. Like, we'll see. I'm just taking my time with this one. But like, if like I knew for sure I was going overseas, I probably would have signed somewhere already. Yeah, that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Um, well, speaking of, of not playing overseas, you just signed a nice big contract extension yeah. With the Dallas Wings, which congrats, proud Thank of you. you. Appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> um, do you think that's influencing a little bit of like, I would rather stay here, focus on WNBA, or like, is that any part of it? I think the biggest part is just building my brand more because at the end of the day, you know, WNBA is like four or five months and we're overseas for like seven months. Like, and yeah. obviously it's not a lot of visibility over there in America. And plus, you know, women's sports is excelling right now too so like it's it's a great time to just build your brand and you know just be here be visible to uh different you know companies and stuff so that's yeah. really more of my focus right now just trying to decide what I'm going to do with that because you know year four like it's you're getting more comfortable with stuff like that so definitely time to expand and do different things in America because at the end of the day this is where I'm from this is where I'll be so that's yeah. pretty much you know my thinking right now yeah um did you buy anything after you signed on the dotted line the contract extension no, I mean, I bought a house last year before that, nice. but I actually did just buy a car yesterday. So that, oh. I guess that's my first big, <laughs> big purchase since then. But, well, what'd uh, you get? Oh, and I bought a chain when I got that contract. <laughs> but uh, I got, <laughs> I, so Love I did. It. But I just got an Audi, uh, nice. Audi truck. It's nice. So I'm uh-huh. excited to get that one. Sweet. Um, was that something like, how soon did you realize or decide like, hey, you know what? If I can be in Dallas long term, I want to be in Dallas long term. Uh, I mean, I, I pretty much knew, especially after the first couple of years, like I, I really liked Dallas too. And, um, at the end of the day, like with WBA contracts, like even if I didn't like Dallas, I probably would have to go back cause they're able to match whoever somebody matches. So I'm like, God. might as well commit. You have no choice either, but I love Dallas. So I would have chose even if I didn't have to, but, uh, so it just worked out perfectly. What's your favorite thing about living in Texas? 
food. I mean, I'm from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Like, like there's very literally different. like very restaurants different. and like it's just not the same. Like, there's a nice restaurant on every corner. Like, you can order anything here. So. I, I guess it's really the food, which is a fat answer, but whatever. The food is great. <laughs> so I'm I'm all for it. Big. Food. What's your least favorite thing? Driving. Like I said, yeah. I'm from Milwaukee. Like the furthest time I drive is like 15, 10 minutes. Like in off season, like where I lift at is like 35 minutes away. I'm like, oh mm. my god. Yeah, there's a lot of driving out here. But hey, you just got yourself a nice new car. Yeah, so you'll exactly. Enjoy now I'll be driving like comfortably. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, your brother plays for the Houston Texans. Mm-hmm. Um, what was your relationship like growing up? Were you guys super competitive? Did you motivate each other? Yeah, super competitive. And our story's a little different because I was always a top player. Like he was, he was lower. Like he was a walk on in college. Like all of that. So he really had to, you know, grind to get where he's at. So that's definitely he's. I always say he's one of my biggest motivations, just how he, you know, overcame a lot, just how he never gave up, you know, wasn't drafted, all that stuff, and just was able to, you know, come out and still end up where he is. But, yeah, that's, like, one of my best friends still to this day. I mean, obviously, to this day, it's my brother, but that's, like, that's, (laughs) like, the closest. Right. (laughs) Yeah, we're really, really, really close, so that's my guy. And he, like helped me with my draft stuff too like him already being a professional like he I signed with his financial advisor like Mm. just a lot of stuff that he was able to guide me through since he already you know went through it so that definitely helped a ton yeah for sure do you guys make it to um each other's games often yeah he tries like he tries to come to mine a lot and he just got a house here like a month ago so he'll be here too but so it's perfect yeah that's so great well speaking of financials um we play different sports uh, mm-hmm. We went to rival colleges, but we're both just women sports investors. So, yeah. is investing something you're interested in long term? Like, what got actually what got you interested in, or like what piqued your interest in investing? Uh, I mean, my financial advisor, like he, you know, he's made that a point to do that. And then we were, uh, especially with just women sports, like we were presented this opportunity and that's the perfect thing to invest in. Like before that, I mean, I honestly don't know what he was investing in, but he <laughs> controls the money. But like this one was more like, you know, do you want to do this? And like, of course, you know, like I said, women's sports is really getting big now and people are looking at it and then it's excelling. And, you know, I definitely want to be a part of that and help it. And plus I'm, you know, a female athlete. <clears throat> so this is my living. So, you know, anything I can to help the platform, that's what I'm going to do. And just women's sports is doing amazing. Like, you know, they've just been covering, you know, women's sports, all sports so well. So I'm just really excited about that in the future of this, but definitely just investing in things, you know, trying to put your money in the right places, what you talk about all day and, you know, try to make a difference. Yeah, for sure. I, I feel like, um, there's been a big shift in like sports culture Mm -hmm. among athletes over these last few years where like the cool thing used to be like, you know, new car, like chain, like show, you know, like clothes, whatever. But now it's almost like athletes are bragging rights is around like, Oh, I invested in this company or this startup. Um, do you feel like you've noticed that too? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I, I, and I think it like, I'm, I love that shift. I think it's so smart because sports can, I think sports influences culture, society so much. Mm -hmm. And, and also I like see, I, I appreciate that hopefully athletes can be role models in the sense of like, okay, I'm not going to go spend money on this. I'm actually going to put, like, I'm going to invest my money. I'm going to be financially responsible, like those sorts of things. Obviously investing in startups is a risk, but, um, I love that that's like a shift that's happened and, uh, mm-hmm. and it's cool that, you know, it's happening. Not only like you're seeing it too, you're feeling it too. You're, you're obviously mm-hmm. doing it. All right. I want to talk about last year's all-star game. So mm. last year's all <laughs> you got a big smile <laughs> on your face. So last year's all-star game, it was team USA versus the WNBA all-stars. And this was right before team USA. It was like their pre-camp going into Tokyo. Um, mm. And I'm one, how, like, what has your involvement been in Team USA, like, leading up to that game? Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, I've been doing Team USA stuff since I was, like, 16. And yeah. even leading up to that game, like, I went to Puerto Rico with them. Uh, I went to Argentina with them, I think, like, the year before. So I've been on a lot of different things with USA. So 
were you was any part of you going into that game since you know the roster had been named for Tokyo you mm. obviously weren't on it but you were a WNBA mm. all-star like how much of you was like all right they didn't pick me to go to Tokyo <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna maybe show them what they missed out on I mean honestly that really wasn't like my motivation like I mean, the people around me was like, yeah, you need to go kill them. Like, they should have put you on team. I'm like, I mean, it is what it is. Like, I'm young. Like, I'm sure I'll be on the next team. Like, obviously, I wouldn't want to be on the team, but I'm still young. So, it just wasn't my time. But, uh, I mean, it definitely felt good to ball. I wanted to ball out regardless. But it was my first All-Star, too. So, I didn't really know what to expect. Like, expect. I just wanted to go out there and have fun. But I guess I had a little bit more fun than I was expecting. It was great. (laughs) Yeah. You Well, you... Dropped 26 points, won MVP, and led the team to a win. So WNBA All-Stars beat Team USA going mm-hmm. to Tokyo, which I saw that and I was like, eee, that's not great for Team USA. <laughs> like, yeah. going to the Olympics. I hope they figure it out. Um, did you talk any trash during the game? Are you a trash talker? Not really, unless somebody okay. talks to me. Like, I'm okay. really just chilling. <laughs> Are you I think talk- I talk to the refs more than anybody. Really? <laughs> yeah. That's... Amazing. And typically it's WNBA <laughs> all-star, two all-star teams. Mm-hmm. So like it being Team USA versus w- all WNBA all-stars, I feel like it makes it an actual game because most all-star yeah. games when it's like everybody's an all-star, you're playing, like especially NBA, the guy, like there's those all-star games. Right, are, right, it's right. just them having fun shooting. Mm-hmm. So this like probably, it felt like it was like charged and... I mean, they had real plays, like, it was real defense and everything. I'm like, oh, this is a game. (laughs) I mean, it's it's pretty incredible that you guys, they had time together, and Mm. then you guys were a bunch of people pulled from separate, you know, you were the WNBA Mm. All-Stars, like, pulled from separate teams, had very little time probably to prepare. So what do you think? One practice, literally. Yeah, like, (laughs) how did you guys put together a win? I mean, so at our, like, our, well, our only practice, uh, Coach Lisa and Coach Thompson, they, like, before the practice, they were like, okay, so who wants to go out here and just play around and who actually wants to win? Because we want to win. So we were like, I, I mean, that. shit, we want to win, too. So, like, then we were like, all right, we're going to compete. And, you know, they were on it, too, as coaches. Like, we were getting yelled at and everything. So it was definitely, it was definitely serious. But, I mean, that just shows, you know, how American basketball is just amazing. Like like you said, like if we could beat Team USA and Team USA went out there and, you know, murdered everybody. Like so that just goes to show like we have a a lot of a lot of killers in, you know, the States. Yeah, it is. I mean, WNBA is stacked, like there's no other mm-hmm. way to, right, to exactly. say it. Um so like you said, it's you have about a week until this next season or preseason starts, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So how are you looking at this upcoming year? Are there any personal goals that you've set out for this specific year and season? Yeah, I, I mean, I have a feeling this is gonna be you know one of my best years. I guess it's on record. Yes, so now I need to really it. know ball. Let's but, go. I mean, I've been, <laughs> I I've been really you know locked in training. You know, eating right, getting in the gym. Like I just feel really, really good. So uh, you know, I'm really, really excited for this season to start. Um, yeah, no, I feel really good about it. Is there anything that you did? You didn't really have an off season. You were in Russia, but that you like after last season ended that you have focused on knowing that you wanted to do a specific thing this season? Like, is there anything you've changed in these past couple months? Yeah. Like really like rehab stuff. Like Mm. I've been getting on like some hip mobility stuff and like a lot, lot more stretching and lifting too. Like last year overseas season, I didn't really like lock into working out for WNBA season until, like, February, but, like, I started right away in, like, November, like, and it wasn't anything, like, crazy, but I just wanted to make sure my body was okay, so by the time I got here, like, I didn't have to, like, stress about getting back in shape and doing this, doing that, so I tried to, you know, focus a lot more on that, you know, in October, November, so now I just feel really good, so I'm excited about that. Uh, how long is preseason for you guys? Uh, so it starts the 17th and then our first like preseason game is the 25th. So we what? really practice for like, yeah. Wow. So we start training camp 17th and then we go to Chicago and play them on the 25th. And then I think another game on like the third or something. And our first game is on the seventh. So not long at all. <laughs> okay. So you, you 17th of April and then May 7th is first game. Yeah. Wow. And you're playing mm-hmm. Chicago in your preseason game. That's quite, uh, a team to play right right <laughs> <So> like, <laughs> right literally <laughs> starting off on a bang um 
That's that's awesome. Do you enjoy preseason? Like, I feel like some players are like, oh, like I just want to get to a season. Like, do you enjoy the process of put like laying down the foundation for the season? Um, well, this is my first training camp since rookie year because the last two years, like, because really, like, I would still be overseas right now until probably like two days before the first game. Like, I didn't come back until like two days before our first game last oh, year. Oh wow! And I didn't we still it was won't that have tight. players. Oh yeah, it's it's really tight. Like, there's still WBA players in Turkey and overseas that probably won't be back. They'll definitely miss a couple of the first games of the season. Like that, uh, like time between each other is not long at all. So this is really like a break for me. Like me being done March first, like I get like a couple months to get ready, which is nothing. But at the end of the day, it's a lot more than I got last year, which was two days. So uh, yeah, yeah. So that it's it's a quick turnaround. All right, I'm gonna ask some fun. WNBA questions. Uh, first one: Who is your all-time starting five in the WNBA? Sheesh, I know that's um, a big one. I know, right? I'll have to go. Sill at the five. I love her. Um, Diana at the two. Maya. At the three, I don't know if they play two, three, whatever. Maya at the three, who's the four? Probably say Sue at the one and Candace at the four. It's, it's good. This five. is clearly I'm young. These are all people that are still playing now. Like, yeah. sorry to all the older players. I mean, I, I obviously didn't watch them that much, but yeah, yeah, those five, I have to go with them. Yeah, nice. All right, who do you think is the most underrated player in the league? Underrated. Hmm. Dang, that's a good question. After I played with Natasha Howard this past season, she's so, so, so good. I have to go with her. Like, even, you know, like she won championships with Seattle and she doesn't get talked about enough, but I don't think they could have won without her because she's amazing, really. So she finishes everything. Her footwork is amazing. So I have to go with her. Cool. All right. Who's your favorite player to go against? I say Courtney Williams just because she always chatting. That's that's my dog, but she's always chatting. Like I said, I don't trash talk, but anytime I play her, I'm talking because she's just talking. So I gotta talk too. So, all right, this is this is a follow up. Who's who's who talks the best trash? I say Diana because she really don't care what she say. Like Dude, I've she don't some, care some what she her says mic'd, to anybody. Her mic'd up moments, I'm like hilarious. She like, was getting attacked like on the bench when she was out. Like every game, I'm like, what is she even down there saying? Like. <laughs> What's going on? She getting kicked out and everything. Oh my god! I I was I was hoping you'd say her because I feel like that's I've always I've I've heard a lot of people say that. Um, yeah. And then even listening to something, I'm like, it's hilarious. But it is it is hilarious. <laughs> uh, who has the best handles in the WNBA besides yourself? I was about to say me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> besides myself, hmm. I say Kennedy Carter. She she has a she has a really good handle. And I played against her in college. She's she's good. She's solid. Nice. Um and then if you could recruit or bring any player to the wings, Stewie. who would it be? Oh, <laughs> no, I didn't even I didn't even finish it. <laughs> Stewie, she's amazing. Oh my I think everybody is... would love to play with Stewie. Yeah, she's she's fun to watch. Um mm. she's also a very cool individual we had her on the pod and i love my conversation with her um all right closing questions and they're quick hitters they don't have to be but um if you weren't a professional basketball player what would you be doing soccer i won three state championships (gasps) in high school wait let's talk about this for a second hold on wait i didn't know that you were why did nobody tell me this Okay, so wait, when did you make when did you make the change or like when did you make the decision it was gonna be basketball? After freshman year. So they wanted me to play in high school at the team, but I didn't play, but I played one more season of select soccer and then I was like, I'm just gonna stick with basketball. But, but you played Yeah, I was skipping like basketball tournaments for soccer when I was younger. Like soccer was that was my thing. Really? Yeah. What position were you? Guess. Forward. Of course. I'm a scorer <laughs> basketball and soccer. That's just what I do. <laughs> Obviously, that's why you loved it. Oh, man, that's so good. Wait, but you played <laughs> soccer through high school? 
No, I stopped after freshman year. So I didn't oh, play but, in high school, but I uh, stopped like after freshman year of high school. Like that was like my last summer season playing select how, and I was done. But did you play high school soccer? No, no, no. I didn't play. Oh, uh, not at all. Mm, so yeah, yeah. how how hard of a, a decision was it to make like, okay, basketball is it? Once I got to that time when I was going to choose, it was like, because I was like getting a lot of offers for basketball. I was just like, I'm starting to love basketball more mm. coming like eighth grade. But like before that, it, it was definitely tough. Like I, I wanted to keep playing both. Dang. I was the opposite. I played basketball until <laughs> my sophomore year. And I told my coach, I mean, you I played was, in high I school was, too? Yeah, I played basketball freshman. I played in middle school and then freshman I tried out sophomore year, made the team, and then the co- I told the coach, and this was when, like, soccer was starting to, like, be here, mm-hmm. and I told the coach, I gave him both of our schedules, the soccer and basketball schedule, and I said, all of the overlaps or all of the conflicts, I'm going to go to soccer. And he was like, well, let me right. think about it for a day. And then he called me up, and he was like, yeah, that's not going to work. Like, yeah. going to miss too much. And right. it, was, it was a tough, like, it, like you almost kind of had to, like, the relationship, like, you're like, oh, like, basketball's not I'm never doing it again you know like it's uh, gonna be soccer and I was uh, pretty sad but then after a day I was like mm, I think I made the right decision I was right, not good exactly. by the way like not oh. really good <laughs> at basketball oh man but um that's awesome I love that you played soccer um all right who's been the biggest influence in your life hmm I just have to say my family like just, you know, my dad's from Nigeria. So like him, you know, he came over here, like his first job was like driving taxis and, you know, he grinded to get where he is. Now he's like education, became a principal. Now he oversees schools and stuff. And then I said my brother a lot too, like his story, but just my family, like just, you know, how they helped me with everything, how they were always on top of me, like my biggest critics, everything. They definitely, you know, formed me to be the per- person and player I am today. So I just say, you know, my family. I love that. Shout out to the fam. Um, Mm -hmm. Okay. You have an absolutely insane sneaker collection, but I'm going to make you pick your favorite. What's your favorite pair? I say the off-white UNC ones. All right. I haven't worn them yet, but... And I don't know what to wear them with, but I feel like they're just... If I ever go broke, I can sell those for a good amount. So that's what I'm baking on. <laughs> well, hopefully you don't go broke because you invest right. in just one sport. So exactly. we're broke, you know? <laughs> you don't have to worry about that. Um, all right. How do you take your coffee? Do you drink coffee and how do you take it? I do. I just... I like regular black. Just add a little bit of sugar and a little sweetener. I have like... You know those little liquid, zero calorie like little things you pour in for a little sweetness. Oh, That's what okay. I put in there. Yeah, so I just make it at home. <laughs> nice. Taking up a lot of your time. I appreciate you being here. Oh, I love good. chatting. Um, it's been awesome to, you know, hear some of your story and just all the things that you've done. And I know that you're going to have a bright future. You've, you're just beginning in the WNBA. So for you, where do you like where do you want to go next and how do you keep pushing and staying motivated I mean I'm nowhere near what I want you know to be I want to get a championship maybe someday get MVP like it's just a lot of goals that haven't even been attained so I think that's motivation in, in its own to get there so definitely gotta keep going awesome I love it well I have a feeling that um, if you want it, you're going to get it. So uh, mm, I'll, I'll be that. excited to watch you and waiting for that MVP and that championship, unless it's against uh, Washington Mystics, and I'm going to have to cheer for Oh, them. that's your team? <laughs> oh, dang. <laughs> it's but again, right. uh, thank you so much for the time today. This was awesome. It was really great chatting with you, and good luck this season. Thank you. Appreciate it. The Players Pod wouldn't be possible without our partners at WIS. WIS helps entrepreneurs and business leaders fulfill their potential by turning temporary roadblocks into long-term wins. No matter your business needs, WIS is ready to team up and take your company to the next level. So head to WIS.com to learn more about how they can help your business on its championship journey. That's WISS.com to find the teammates you need to accelerate your dreams and achieve your business goals today. Thank you.